folks it is the turtle dog back with another year and a list for you today so for this list we are going to focus on the future yes this is my most anticipated movies for 2018 there are a lot of great films coming out and as always the beginning of the year you get you know really excited whether that pans out by the end of this year looking back on these films that's a different story but for now these are the ones I am most excited for so to get started check out my 20 through 11 most anticipated films of 2018 So let's get right into the list. At number 10, I have Sicario 2, Soldado. Now, for the first Sicario, which came out in 2015, this movie was my second favorite movie of that year. So obviously, this is going to be one of my most anticipated movies uh, coming into 2018. You have Benicio Del Toro coming back. You have Josh Brolin coming back. I want to see how much deeper they're going to dive into the quote-unquote drug war and the war they're going to go into with the cartels and what story they're going to end up telling because I love how Emily Blunt's story ended with the first film and it's fitting that she's not coming back because I think her story is complete but I didn't really expect a sequel from this movie I thought Sicario worked well as just a standalone film but seeing what they're trying to do with this exploring some of the stuff that's going on with the underbelly with the, with, with the cartels and how the U.S. government is kind of involved with a lot of this stuff I think there's so many different types Types of stories that you can tell within this kind of universe within this within this world so I'm excited uh, to see what they're gonna bring uh, for this next installment for Sicario at number nine I have Wreck-It Ralph 2 Ralph breaks the internet I think this is such a clever idea for a sequel because since the first film came out which was I think was like 2012 2013 um, and that dealing with like the arcades and I love the way they created that universe and I wanted to know where they could go with a sequel uh, because of how the world is now and we don't really have arcades when the title was was released Ralph breaks the internet and with internet gaming I thought that wow that made a lot of sense and I'm interested to see how they're actually going to play um, on a lot of those different conventions as far as like stuff like Candy Crush and stuff like that of course we got the that dumb emoji movie but this is going to be something wholly different and you have all, all the characters coming back from the first film which I'm excited about and from the stuff I was hearing coming out of D23 um, they're bringing in a lot of the Disney princesses um, and I'm I'm hearing a lot of great things. Of course, this doesn't come out until the end of this year, around Thanksgiving, but I am super excited and been waiting for Wreck-It Ralph 2. Now, some might think, why is this so high on your list? But this is a movie that's actually been on my radar for a while now. And this is Tomb Raider. Uh, this is the reboot starring Alicia Vikander. And I just felt like that this movie was ripe for a reboot. Um, they had the reboot video game, which came out a few years back. And of course, those Angelina Jolie movies, to me, they are really, really dated. Just like a lot of movies from the early 2000s. And I just felt like with 
this type of property, with this type of story, uh, with this type of character, I just thought that it was ripe for a reboot if it was done the right way. This could be something that was really exciting to, uh, to, to see. And then they cast Alicia Vankander, who is an Oscar-winning actress. Um, I love the director, Roy Uthog. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, he directed uh, this foreign film called The Wave, which is on Netflix, and I highly recommend you guys check it out. I thought that was a one, probably one of the better disaster films that I've seen um, that really focuses on story and character. And if he's able to kind of bring that um, to a big budget U.S. Uh, production, then uh, I don't know. It could be something that's really interesting. Of course, people talk about the video game, uh, the video game genre in movies, and how it's kind of been lackluster and whatnot. I mean, yes, you can you can argue that back and forth. For me, that is not even really a factor. I just kind of look at this as a film based on uh, as an adaptation of a property, and with the team behind the camera and the act and the actress in front of the camera, um, I do have high hopes, and I'm actually looking forward to this film. So the next film I have on my list is Creed Two. Now we don't have a lot of information. They haven't even started shooting yet. From what I'm hearing, the movie goes into production in. February and it's still slated to be released in November of this year so that's a short window to really start production finish editing and release the film within the same year it has been done but the thing that has really gotten me excited about this film is of course we got Sylvester Stallone and Michael B. Jordan and Tessa Thompson coming back um, the one thing that really I wanted to see more than anything was Ryan Coogler of course he's not able to come back because of Black Panther and doing the press and all that stuff like that but when they announced this new director and he's the, his name is Steven Capel Jr. Um, it got me excited because he did he had his feature film debut with a film called, with a film called The Land and I went I went on IMDB and I watched the trailer for this film and although I haven't seen it watching the trailer it feel it it, it kind of evokes some of those same um, type uh, type of um, feelings that I had watching Ryan Coogler with his first film, Fruitvale Station. As far as like the tone and the atmosphere and the characters, it really has this kind of down and dirty, grungy uh, type of style that focuses on uh, characters and, and, and deals with the conflict of these characters. Um, so I, I don't know, I haven't seen that particular film, but the fact that they've announced uh, this guy Stephen Cable Jr. to direct this film, um, and then Ryan Coogler is still going to be attached in some in some capacity as a producer. Um, it, it's going to be excited, and just on the strength of that, I like seeing young blood. I like seeing new talent come forth, and I think uh, the Creed Rocky uh, franchise, because they're kind of mid-budget films, I think those are those are properties that are really good for young talent to kind of you know cut their teeth on some some bigger productions and uh, yeah so I'm excited to see what this new director is going to bring to Creed 2 and of course this was my favorite film of 2015 so I definitely have to be excited for this one so my next film is Pacific Rim Uprising. Uh, this film I'm definitely looking forward to after watching the trailer uh, that came out a few months back. Of course, we got John Boyega coming into uh, this cast. He's going to play the son of Idris Elba's character from the first film. And I like how this movie kind of feels uh, like it still lives within that same universe, but uh, tonally, aesthetically, it feels uh, different. And I kind of like that. I like what Guillermo what Del Toro uh, brought to the first film, really kind of laying the groundwork of this universe as far as with the Kaiju and with the Jaegers. And now it just feels like with this next film, we just want to go out and just have fun and just have a ball. Um, I've always, I've mentioned this before with the Jaegers. I like how um, they, they look more agile and they, they move a lot quicker. And I think that's going to add to the action sequences. I definitely want to see what John Boyega can bring to this film outside of Star Wars in another uh, tentpole property. So yeah, Pacific Rim Uprising, I'm definitely looking forward, for, looking forward to this one. At number five, I have Alita Battle Angel. Now this is a movie that has been on my radar for years. And when I say years, I think I mean decades. 
<laughs> that's what it feels like. Um, and this movie has been attached to James Cameron for many, 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 many years. And when he got involved with Avatar, a lot of times I, I kept thinking to myself, okay, when is he going to get to Battle Angel? When is he going to get to Battle Angel? Because he's been talking about this movie even way before Avatar. And because this is based on the anime and the manga, and I like the story um, to Battle Angel, I always wanted to see what James Cameron was going to be able to bring to this. So of course he's doing like three, four, five more Avatar films. So he actually passed this on to Robert Rodriguez. And I'm a huge fan of Robert Rodriguez. Uh, he was one of uh, the filmmakers that kind of really um, ins uh, in inspired my own love and my own uh, desire to be a filmmaker with, uh, if you've never read his book, Rebel Without a crew definitely read that um, especially a lot of his earlier films from the 90s like from Dust Till Dawn Desperado El Mariachi um, Sin City is another great one so uh, lately Rodriguez hasn't really been hitting it out of the park with a lot of his films but he he has that pedigree that I think combined with James Cameron and the innovation and the creativity that James Cameron has um, combined with Robert Rodriguez and his style of filmmaking and his and also his uh, his resourcefulness of filmmaking as well. I am definitely interested to see more from Alita Battle Angel and because I've been waiting for this movie just to see something from this film for years. Um, whether it lives up to the expectation, I don't know. Could it be another Ghost in the Shell? I don't know. Uh, for what I'm seeing, I'm, I'm hoping not, but that remains to be seen. So, But n nonetheless, I am still super excited for Alita Battle Angel. Next film I have for you is The God Particle. This is basically you can call Cloverfield 3. Now, I'm a huge fan of the Cloverfield films. I love the first film, the found footage film. I think that was just a, 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 a completely unique way of, of telling a, 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 a giant monster movie. Um, and I just, I just really, really dug that film a whole lot. And then I loved how they announced 10 Cloverfield Lane. Um, dropping that trailer without no announcement two months before the film was going to be released. And that movie starring John Goodman and Mary Elizabeth Winstead, it really, to me, it really hit home for me. And I really liked that film. So for me, they're two for two. And now that they're kind of building this anthology type universe, this maybe Twilight Zone type universe. I know uh, with uh, God Particle, this is taking place in space and uh, it's it's got a really good cast. And again, we don't have a trailer for this film yet. And it was just announced a couple of days ago that they pushed the date back. It was originally supposed to come out on February 2nd, but now it's pushed back to April 20th. So it's still gonna come out within the next few months. And I'm hoping to see a trailer for this film soon, but I am super excited excited for this film because of uh, just off the strength of the last two films from Cloverfield. So uh, yeah, God, God Particle is my number four. So for my number three, I have a film that I've been waiting for since 2004. And with this film, this is a film that many people have been asking and asking for a sequel. It's the, it's the film that's been ripe for a sequel since the first film, and we don't understand why the studio has never put this into production. They put other sequels into production before this one, and everybody kept saying, why? This movie is perfect. It's The Incredibles 2. Pixar's The Incredibles 2. I am so looking forward to this film. I have been waiting for a sequel for this film since the first film came out. It is, it's just, it's, it's prime for a sequel to this film. I love this family of superheroes. I loved the first film. Of course, with all Pixar films, uh, you, you really have kind of like that hook that brings you in. But once you get into the theater, Pixar just has that way of really just bringing you in emotionally with the characters and with the story. And I love how you really kind of get into uh, the, the, the mix of this, of this family, like understanding some of the nuances of, of them trying to balance out their lives um, as a family um, and just dealing with some of their own personal things, um, but also having to come together and fight as a, um, as a superhero family. So it just kind of, it just works on so many different levels and I just cannot wait to see what the, what the story they're going to tell uh, with this new, uh, with this new film. So Incredibles 2, 
All right, now we get into the home stretch. And of course, it's probably no surprise to anybody what the top two are. And these are movies that have been highly anticipated for many, 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 many years. But let's get to number two. And this is, uh, for a lot of people, this will be their number one. But if you've been watching me for any, any length of time, you know what my number one is. But number two is Avengers Infinity War. Yes, I've talked about this on the top 10 trailers. I'm gonna talk about it again here. This is a movie that has been 10 years in the making since we saw the first Iron Man in 2008. The culmination of the MCU and if anything from what you saw in that trailer this is going to be an event film for everyone you're talking about bringing back all the characters that we've seen basically whether it be primary characters or secondary characters everybody is going to be in this film and i am so intrigued to see how the russo brothers are really going to balance a lot of the screen time as well as really introducing thanos which we've seen thanos in other previous uh movies whether it be it in small bit parts but this is really, really, really going to focus um, on Thanos. And I love what the Russo brothers said about this kind of being like a heist film with him trying to get the stones. And that really does make sense uh, for, uh, for at least for this film, uh, for what this is going to be. But I mean, seeing all these cast of characters together and then seeing how they're going to kind of bring in the Guardians of the Galaxy and have them work together with the other Avengers and all these other Marvel characters. Um, I think this is something that's going to be super exciting for many people uh, to see and of course it's just how we like to see the banter and the interaction between a lot of characters that we haven't seen before um, you know we want to see Star-Lord and, and, and Rocket interact with Captain America and Iron Man and so it's going to be a lot of fun and it, there's definitely going to be some, some high stakes involved uh, to say the least so Avengers Infinity War is my number two and for my number one you already know it is black panther yes i have been looking forward to this movie for a, a, at least a few years um it's always been on my radar but there was something that really just kind of hit me personally when i saw that cast come out in hall h and two years ago i think it was in 2015 uh, when that cast hit the stage um and this was coming off uh, a, a lot of stuff that was going on in the news uh, dealing with like race relations and police brutality and um, this literally weeks um, from a lot of a lot of news that was hitting uh, about that and that really affected me in a deep way so to go to San Diego and to be in Hall H um, and to see that cast just come out on stage and to see the way that uh, that crowd reacted uh, to that cast um, it just it just sparked something in me and it just made me realize that there is something deeper uh, and something that's going to be more powerful and more meaningful to this film and even with that being said this is going to be a badass film <laughs> it, it really really is and I love the reception that it's been getting especially from the African American community uh, and how it just kind of just resonated uh, uh, so powerfully uh, within our community whether you're a Marvel fan or film fan everybody knows about this film and it's exciting to be in this time and being a part of that so um, yeah I've talked to you guys I've talked to your heads off enough about um, Black Panther so we have a, a little over a month until this film comes out from the time I'm recording this so uh, yeah I am so looking forward to that film uh i can't even express so those are my most anticipated films of 2018 it is going to be a hell of a year and i cannot wait buckle up and enjoy the ride good or bad <laughs> so let me know what some of your most anticipated films of 2018 are in the comments below and as always make sure you rate like subscribe and share and go ahead and check out my other dorks at mouth dork at the disco dork and at sidewalk siren and as for me i am the turtle dork and with that your boy is out mm -hmm.